Well, hello, it's Lydia here and welcome to my channel. I would like to thank every one of you that voted and to see whether or not I should paint color onto this painting, glaze color onto it. And right now it's so neck and neck that I'm not really sure what to do at this point because I want it to get a little bit farther apart as far as it was like 50, 50. Um, so everyone is kind of split, kind of like I am on that subject. However, today I am going to be painting a skull because it is the end of October and hey, you know, spooky season would not be complete without painting a skull. So I'm going to introduce you to my little friend. So this is Larry and Larry is oftentimes my muse when I am going to do a skull painting. So any paintings that you see that have skulls in them, Larry has consented to pose for. And um, He's lovely, his top of his head comes off, which is a little bit gruesome, but um, there's no brain in there, so it's not a real human skull anyway. That would be so macabre and a little creepy. So what I did was a preliminary sketch on watercolor paper. Now what's kind of cool about this, this sketch is that it has pencil, acrylic inks, and a little bit of acrylic paint, but there's a surprise with this sketch. It's very shiny because it's got um, a glaze of UV paint on it, which is pretty nifty. <laughs> and this is what it does. Yeah, how cool is that? Um, but I want to make this into a painting. Now, here's a couple of things. I wanted to paint on a black canvas. <sighs> black canvases, they are tricky. Um, because when you use acrylic paint, sometimes it's super, super glossy, although you can get matte black acrylic paint, which would be really handy if I had any, but I don't. So um, what I did was I painted the entire canvas black, and then I put a layer of matte medium over the top of it so that when I'm filming, it's not like a black mirror shining at all of you. So one of the other tricky things about working with black canvases is how do you get a sketch onto a black canvas? Well, I'm gonna show you something that's a pretty cool product. So what I do is I take my preliminary sketch, like this one here, and I take a photograph of it, or I scan it, depending on the size of it. Um, and then I go into Rapid Resizer. I do have a whole entire video on this, so please hit that if you wanna see that. Because this preliminary sketch is on a black background. When I go into rapid resizer, I change it to a negative. So when I print it out and I tape it all together, it looks like this. And then I can transfer it onto my canvas. But how did I get this transferred onto a black canvas? This is falling on the floor. This is called Sarrel transfer paper or Sarrel or however you want to pronounce it. But it is transfer paper and it comes in a lighter color and transfers right onto a black canvas. It comes in five colors. You can get graphite white, blue, yellow, red. I got yellow because that's what was available, but I'll put a link in the description for you so that if you want to purchase sarrel paper and you want to paint on a black canvas, this is a wonderful tool to use. Just tape it onto your canvas, you put your image over it, and then you can trace it directly onto your canvas. And you can see how beautifully this transferred onto the canvas. One of the great things about this is that if you don't like it, it will erase very easily. It is something that you can use on a white canvas as well if you use one of the darker colors. And you're not going to have the graphite pencil that comes through your paint at all. Of course, you can see all my umbrella lights, aren't they nice? So of course, you know, anything that I find to be helpful, I will always share with you. And please feel free to leave any questions in the comment section because when I find tools that work really well for certain applications, I will always share them with you. So because I want to paint a realistic skull, I am going to be using golden open acrylics and I'm going to paint in monochrome first and then I'm going to glaze very subtle color onto this. And I want it to look 
like an oil painting. And one of the ways that I do that is by using golden open acrylics because it's like a nice compromise between acrylic paint with that quick drying time and oil paint, which has a longer drying time, but the blendability. Okay, so this is my palette here and I've mixed my Burnt Umber and Mars Black together and then I slowly add white until I get this color string which is actually kind of this monochrome string and that's what I'll be using for this entire painting. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, what I've learned with Golden Open Acrylics is that I want to work from dark, from light to dark, not dark to light, which is what I normally do, but on this I want to have all of my brightest highlights in and then work the gray scale down towards its darkest colors. I find that painting skulls are actually really good practice for light and shadow and that's part of the reason why I started painting skulls in the first place was because they teach you a lot about contouring and you can really get a lot of light and shadow and it's just a, a great way of learning and having a skull is I highly recommend it. I'll put a link in the description for you know if you'd like to purchase a replica of a human skull because I find it to be really helpful especially when it comes to learning anatomy and painting something a little more interesting than just a sphere. So one of the reasons you see me painting in sections on this painting is because even though golden open acrylics have a slower drying time than regular acrylics, they still don't have the slowest drying time like compared to oils, so you do have less time to blend. So every section that I do, I'm working from the lighter tones to the darker tones, but I'm blending as I go. start painting the smoke now that we've got the majority of the skull painted in and this is going to be the darker bit of smoke more wispy so I'm just going in with one of my mid-tone grays and then I'm going to fill in with darker eventually going darker around it So this smoke is relatively easy because it's just kind of fading back into the background, but this is going to be a little bit more um, meticulous to paint and there has to be a lot of blending to make it smooth. So one thing that I would like to say is capturing smoke on camera in a darkened room with light shining on incense is no easy feat. but. My fiance and I spent an evening in the dark with incense burning and although that may sound really romantic, it was actually kind of tedious. I just watched him take photos and, and told him, oh, I want it to curl, I want it to do this, I want it to do that. And you can't get smoke to do exactly what you want, but I needed to have some kind of reference. And so, yeah, that's how I got my smoke curling references and sort of made it up after that because I needed to know what the gradients would be and everything. And a couple of things that are really good to know about painting smoke is you do want parts of it to fade into the background. So you really want to blend these areas and have these smooth gradients. As certain parts of the smoke are definitely more transparent, you want them to fade into the background and then you have your lighter parts which are going to show more in the light. Okay, I'm going to use this gloss glazing liquid and 
The two colors that I'm going to use for the skull are burnt umber and yellow ochre. I'm going to do yellow ochre obviously in the light spots and work from light to dark and add the a little bit of the burnt umber to it in more of the shadowed areas. And I'm just lightly glazing color on here using very, very little paint and mixing it with some of that glazing medium. One tip I will give um, when it comes to glazing, I personally use a scrubbing motion. So when I glaze over a grisaille, I use an old brush to do it because if I use a new brush, I will destroy it. Now that the, this has been glazed with the yellow ochre and the burnt umber, you have that more weathered human bone appearance next thing we're gonna do is the smoke so the smoke in the background I don't have a Payne's gray in the golden open acrylic so I'm going to try using a regular acrylic I'm gonna see what that color mixture is first on maybe one of the darker areas and see if I even like it and then this smoke will be a little bit on the brighter side and I think I'm gonna go with a combination of a little bit of blue and green because remember the neutral grays are going to knock that back and mute that color quite a bit. So the brightest parts are obviously going to be the brightest color and then the gray color will knock that color back. It's almost like you're doing a graying down of the color but the, the gray is already on the canvas. So what I ended up doing for the background smoke was using a mixture of Windsor Newton Payne's Gray and Manganese Blue by Golden Open Acrylics. Okay, for this smoke, I actually mixed a little bit of sap green in with the manganese blue and Payne's gray. And I'm using quite a bit of the glazing medium to really thin that out because I don't want it to be too dark. I know it's really difficult to see whether or not I'm even putting any color on the canvas right now, but I really am, I promise you that. However, what I've learned is that if you glaze very lightly, you can always add more color to it, but it's much harder to take it away. And when you're painting on top of a grisaille, you don't wanna have to continually paint more highlights on top. You can do your brightest highlights, but paint lightly, and then you can darken certain areas as you go with your glaze. So once all of this smoke has been glazed to the desired color and everything, and as you can see, I'm adding a little bit more color to different areas, um, you'll be able to see a before and after of the grayscale painting versus the glazed. Okay, so this painting is completed and it does resemble an oil painting. This is an acrylic painting. It does look like an oil painting. Maybe not exactly like an oil painting, but pretty darn close. I love the subtle glazed colors on here. I think that they really, they work for this subject matter. For one thing, it's not bright, it's not vibrant, and it looks pretty realistic. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit that like button. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And as always, I love you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.